All right, so we made it to the knockout round. It was an awesome qualifying round. I had found a good group of fish. I picked up them apart. I caught what I needed, and then I got to do some practice and it really set myself up to get ready to start on the knockout round. And for this, I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I kind of bailed on my starting spot from the other two days. I caught some fish there, but they, was, they weren't enough of them willing to bite. They were good ones, but I knew exactly where I wanted to go. So I took the 30 minutes of the knockout round. They give you the ride around. I checked all my schools. Two of them weren't there. Two of the smaller fish schools were there, and then I pulled up to where I knew I was going to start. And I got set up on my rock point. And Kyle Hall was about 100 yards up. And I guess he had found that same one. He was in a group B and I was in group A. So we never actually saw each other on there, but we knew at that point we were gonna have to, have to work around each other, but it was what it was. And to start off the knockout round, I had my group of fish. I could see them on my Lorenz 2D when I pulled up. I just kind of uh, put it in an anchor mode. I was sitting there and I just started dropping down. And it was insane. <laughs> I caught five and five of guests. I think I had over 19, I think I had almost 20 pounds with those. It was just, they were all big ones. They were all four pounders for the most part. And what I was doing is I was taking the Z-Man trick shot. I was actually using one in black. I don't have it currently with me. I doubt my boat. It's getting a couple things done to it, but I was using black in the morning and that would change to Gobi Bryant in the afternoon. But when I was just, I was getting on top of them, I would drop, you'd see them on your lorance. It looked like freaking spaghetti down there. You just chook. And I had gone four for four the other day in the qualifying round, and I was like, there's no way I could beat that. I never thought I would beat that, especially in the same week. And this was a different area, um, but it was an unbelievable start to the morning. And from there, I just kept going, I kept grinding, working around this. There's a rocky outcropping that's stuck on the end of this one shoal, and that's where those fish were set up. And after I caught a bunch of them, they kind of got a little spooky. They started spreading out. Once Kyle and I started trolling motoring and around over them, and I just kind of kept picking and you'd catch them here and there. And I ended up staying about the first half of the day. I had just about, I knew I needed, if I had 60 pounds, I felt pretty confident I was going to make the uh, championship round. And I just kept kind of going around. I got up to that mid fifties mark. And that was when I decided to leave that main area because I caught so many four pounders at that point. I was like, I, I didn't want to burn them up. Kyle needed to catch a couple more just to make sure he made the round. And I went and checked some other spots and I pulled off a couple more. And I guess at that point, I called it at the end of the, I guess it was the end of the second period. And I was gonna make the drive over to the Lake Michigan side because for the championship round on Saturday, they were calling for heavy winds out of the north um, west which would blow right into my spot. It was gonna blow into everybody's spot on that Green Bay side for the most part. So I was trying to find something different. I had never been over there. I went over to, it's called Raleigh's Bay. Had a lot of good shoals looking marked on there. Um, and I went out there and just idled. And it was blowing pretty good that afternoon. And the wind was blowing out of the uh, southeast that day. So it was actually coming across most of Lake Michigan. I did a lot of bouncing around out there, just idling, looking at my side scan with my Lorance units. And, was really just trying to dial them in, figure out where those fish were going to be, where they were going to be set up. So I found some areas I felt decently confident in that if I had to come over there, I could go catch some fish. And that's how I spent the entire third period. And I, I was happy with that. I ended up in third place. Um, I never fished in the third round at all. So I, I really think if I was sitting on the spot, I could have won that day. But there was no point to it as far as I was concerned. I was trying to play a long game get set up for that championship round and really have a shot at winning it. But um, the same setup that I've been using all week, it's that 721 medium heavy jackhammer. Just, it's the best drop shot rod there is out there. You can see I got an Arden Seaforce 3000 spinning reel, lets me take up lots of line, super silky drag, awesome for catching fish. That's the Z-Man uh, trick shot I was telling you about, it's a three and a half inch version, used in black and Gobi Bryant. Hayabusa size one, DSR 132 HD, drop shot hook, perfect, pegging them in the roof of the mouth every time. Uh, Eco Pro Tungsten drop shot weight, I was using a half ounce weight most of the time. I'd use the three eighths occasionally, just to try to slow the rate of fall, and you'd sometimes trick those fish into biting then. But Seaguar Smackdown, 20 pound flash green uh, braid. Seaguar Tatsu, eight pound 
uh, fluorocarbon leader, and it's just that was the perfect setup. It just it caught a ton of fish. I had three of them lined up on my deck, and that's what I used. So after the knockout round, going to the championship round, I was feeling real good. Wasn't sure about the win, but we'll go into that and the next one and talk a little bit more. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.